better, stronger, faster. Steve Austin has now become the world's first fully functioning bionic man. And he has agreed to work for Oscar and the West Side. And now he embarks on his first mission. Where will his first mission take him? Let's find out. Welcome back, agents, to West Side Intelligence. This time is issue number five of The Bionic Man, and this one is titled Masquerade Ball. So let's see what happens to Steve next. We begin with Steve on a plane, and Oscar is briefing him on his mission. There's an international robotics conference in Washington, D.C. this weekend. The chairman of Leonov Tech, Gennady Leonov, will be delivering the keynote address. He's the man we're investigating. You will be posing as Yuri Kamarov, an executive with Leonov Tech. You will have access to every aspect of Leonov's dealings. Once inside, the objective is to investigate Leonov himself, download his files, talk to his people, if possible, interrogate him. But at no point is he to be aware of your agenda. Keep it all friendly. The neural translator you've been equipped with will allow you to understand Russian. But speaking the language will be a different matter altogether. The language library loaded into your hard drive will play a constant stream of conversational Russian into your earpiece, focusing on the technical aspects of Leonov's business. Remember, this exercise is intended to be a low-impact, danger-free field test of your new capabilities and wet tech. So Colonel Austin, let's see what you can do with those million dollar apps we stuffed you full of. Good luck, Steve. So Steve starts mingling in the crowd looking for Kamarov. And he looks over and he spots him. So Steve grabs the arm of a waitress and he says, excuse me, miss. She says, what can I get you? He says, my friend over there, I'm playing a joke on him. I know this is a little out there, but there's a hundred bucks in it for you. She asks, what do you want me to do? Well, I was thinking, and he whispers something in her ear. The waitress takes a key card away from Steve and walks over towards Kamarov. She walks up to Yuri and says, hi Yuri. He looks up at her and she says, yes, you handsome. He says, I'm sorry, have we met? No, but we're going to, if you'd like. Room 1145, now. And she drops the key card on his lap. She walks back over to Steve. She says, all good? Steve says, perfect. And he hands her the $100 bill. Think you'll fall for it, she asks? Totally. He's gonna be knocked out when he finds out it's me instead of you in that room. So Kamarov is walking down the hall looking for room 1145. And he finally reaches it. He uses the key to get into the door. He opens the door and says, hello. And the voice says, hi, Yuri. You sound different, he says. Bad cold. I need someone to nurse me back to health. Well, my dear, I'm no doctor, but Kamarov's words are cut short when Steve hits him from behind with his hand and knocks him out. And he has him tied to a bed and mouth covered. He says, sorry, buddy. I know this wasn't the date you had in mind. Well, at least I hope it wasn't. Steve leans over and puts his face in Yuri's. He says, but I need to borrow your face for a while. He uses his eye and scans Yuri's face. He says, don't worry, I have no intention of keeping it. Let's see if the OSI Lon Chaney app makes me red. Steve looks over in the mirror and he notices a discoloration around the mouth area. What the hell? 
Austin smacks himself in the head. Duh, Austin. He takes the tape off of Yuri's mouth and rescans the face again. He looks in the mirror. Wow, a bionic face. At that moment, his phone rings. Da, Austin says. Yuri, Mr. Leonov wants to speak to you before his speech. We're in his suite. I'll be right there, Austin says. What room is it again? Leonov is talking with Steve, whom he believes to be Kamarov. He says, I don't trust my nephew any longer. There are things he's involved with. I don't know how quite to say it, but I fear for my life, Yuri. He leans up and says, what leads you to believe this? Leonov says, I suspect that he's made alliances with a very dangerous, and then there's a knock on her door. Leonov's bodyguard walks in. He says, they've started, Mr. Leonov. It's on in five minutes. Steve looks over at the bodyguard and says, they'll have to wait. Mr. Leonov needs some, but he interrupts Steve. Ah, this old fool is just prattling on, Kamarov. Pay no heed. Besides, I have Oleg to watch over me. Isn't that right, Oleg? And before they can walk out of the room, Steve says, May I use your bathroom, Mr. Leonov? I'll be down shortly. Of course, Yuri. Although I suspect that this is your way of avoiding my opening joke. Now that Steve is in private, he gives an update on the mission. Breaker 1-9, this is the Tin Man. You got your ears on solid go? That's a big 10-4 Tin Man. Have you been to see the wizard? Affirmative, solid go. How's your Russian holding up? Keep it simple and ice cream. Have to say, though, Leonov doesn't seem the cloak and dagger type. And another thing, he's scared out of his mind. Of what? Oscar asks. Who? Steve says. He mentioned a nephew who's apparently not here. Oscar says, ah, Vernadsky. He's our next line of investigation. But for now, you stick with the old man. You ready to upload? That's a go, Solid Gold. We are broadcasting live. Steve looks into the mirror. And now they're able to see everything that Steve sees. Back in a conference room, Leonov is now getting ready to be introduced. The chairman says, From Leonov Tech, worldwide leader in automated production, the chairman and CEO, Gennady Leonov. Thank you. Thank you so much. Please forgive my English. I learned all my English from Boris and Natasha on Rocky and Bullwinkle. Steve now heads towards the bathroom. He says, Austin out of the boudoir, heading for what I'm sure would be a scintillating lecture. Oscar says, just decrypting the, the data you sent. Perfect. Your satellite uplink is functioning at an optimum. So is my bladder. I'm going to hit the bathroom, so I might be losing you folks for a bit. Margaret speaks up. Colonel Austin, this is Carlisle. We like to continue monitoring from operations just as a precaution. Stay online. Well, folks, Steve says, you see, I'm pretty big on bathroom privacy. It should be in my personnel file. Steve looks over and notices a bit of blood coming from under a stall. Wait a minute. He opens the stall door. Good Lord. New York, New York. It's a hell of a town. Any suggestions? Oscar looks up at the body. Anyone we know? Steve turns the body over and sees that it's Leonov's bodyguard. Oh my God. Steve? Steve, report. Steve jumps down the stairwell and lands at the bottom. He says, if you people have any sort of backup, I suggest calling it in now. Something weird is going down here. That corpse was Leonov's bodyguard, 
but I saw him alive and kicking just seconds before. Looks like I'm not the only one playing dress up tonight. Margaret and Oscar look at each other, worried. Leonov continues, it is this human touch that I will refer to, something I fear our industry is phasing out in the blind rush to automation, which is why I'm announcing a new initiative to focus on the efforts of Leonov Tech, not only replacing human workers, but assisting them, especially those limited by physical challenges. Steve makes it back into the audience. One of the listening bystanders says, Kamarov, you've missed almost the entire speech. Come, sit with us. Leonov continues, I realize many of you must think that I'm crazy. See now, yes, my company was a pioneer in robotic manufacturing. But when I think of how many craftsmen that practice has eliminated, when I think of the families who were affected by loss of jobs, I am filled with shame. For it is the human element that makes a product worthy of purchase. It is the human element that builds companies and sustains life. And it is the human element that keeps our world from being run by soulless machine. A hand comes ripping through Leonov's chest. And the man that holds his body above his head is the bodyguard. He says, here's a gut full of irony, courtesy of an iron man. The crowd is running and screaming in panic. And the bodyguard continues his rant. I thought this was a room full of gearheads. Don't you want to get a closer look at the hardware? Steve is trying to make his way through the crowd. Step aside, move. Oscar says, Steve, what are you doing? Do not approach the subject. Repeat, do not approach the subject, Colonel Austin. He's not ready for this, as he turns and looks at Margaret. Margaret says, let's find out. Colonel Austin, apprehend the suspect immediately. That's in order. You couldn't order me not to, lady. Steve Austin jumps way into the air. The security force shoots their guns at the bodyguard, but the bullets have no effect. The bodyguard says, my turn. And then Steve grabs the bodyguard from behind and says, no, it's my turn. Steve lifts him up and drives him into the ground with his elbow. The guard gets up. He says, you're not one of Leonov's people. Steve says, neither are you. Your Russian is worse than mine. The guard draws back and punches Steve square in the face. Oh, I got a whole lot of things worse than yours. The guard knocks Steve to the ground once again. Get the picture? He stomps Steve in his chest. Steve says, who, who the hell is this guy? Oscar yells to Steve, get out of there, Steve. The guard says, you mean no one told you? He grabs Steve by the face and begins dismantling his disguise as Yuri Komarov. Then the security guard loses his disguise and it's revealed to be Hull. Hull says, well, look at you, the Bionic Man 2.0. All right, agents, that does it for issue number five. Come back next time for issue number six, and we'll see the continuing battle between Hull and Steve. Remember to sub and like my videos. Uh, I would appreciate it. And until next time, let's keep it classified.